on to the first segment of the show. We're going to talk about a couple of things. Mojo Report, this is our segment we do weekly on Mojo. Shout out to them. It's a sports investing stock market. And each week we talk about trends within the market in the app. Let's talk about the biggest headline. Zach Wilson's comeback game. I mean, first game of the season. Zach Wilson in the fourth quarter, 10 for 12, 120 plus yards, a touchdown, no picks. Leads the game winning draft for the New York Jets. The Jets are 1-0 and on the season with Zach Wilson. I've been telling you guys all along, this is our franchise quarterback. People can talk about all, all they want about the first three quarters of the game, but let's be honest. He was rusty. The Jets didn't put him in the best position offensively. And if you've been watching the Jets, which I wouldn't blame if you haven't, with Joe Flacco and with Zach Wilson, there's clearly a difference in energy within the players and how they respond to Zach. And a bunch of those sacks that Zach evaded? Dog. Joe Flacco was a st- would have would have gotten would have been, 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 been over. He's a pocket. But, but now type, listen, you know? Zach Wilson had two of the best moments this week by any player. Zach Wilson leads a game winning drive, and what did he do? He caught a receiving touchdown and hit the gritty. He asked Justin Jefferson, rate it. He said nine out of ten. He stamped him. Zach Wilson has too much swag, talent, potential, and goddamn skills to be a bad quarterback. <laughs> I invested in him for thirty two dollars. <laughs> Right now, he's at $34. I invested a couple shares into him. I'm up right now. So I'm feeling amazing because when you believe in players, this isn't just for show. We're putting our money where our mouth that is. Dope. And Zach Wilson right now is making me money because he's my franchise quarterback. And I'm glad Mojo is giving me the opportunity to invest in the guys I believe in. That was beautiful. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was very beautiful. I'll tell you what, he got saved because it was looking <laughs> ugly. Well, how did he get saved? Because the Four first quarter. three quarters, he was very mediocre. But how did he get saved, though? Zach Talk, Wilson? Talk yeah. else. What do you mean? No, I'm curious. Get saved? You said he got saved. It's no, like, no. He saved, he catch he's, a break? No, he saved his, himself. His, his, his game. Yeah. Absolutely. No. So he himself saved Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow, no, just, he's the, the way he brought that up, you <laughs> know what I mean? Talk, it was like... Defend your man. Um, I don't I don't think you have I mean, anything negative against, to say not, about not Zach. Not really. I feel I, like he was going to come here. I, I, I thought that's what that's what I was expecting. He's going to do it against Miami this weekend. Who? Zach. Zach. Really? Yeah. We'll be at that game. Zach's going to win this game. We'll you know that. that you know that. First you thing. know that. That's a must-win He's game. He's winning that. That's an absolute must-win game no for the Jets. No Tua makes this so corny. But the Jets won 24-20. to The Jets obviously came back. But the other quarterback in that game was Kenny Pickett. He Rookie. I just basically started the game, but... He was brought in because the offense was boring. It was stalling. It, it was like, you Steve know, was paint drying on the wall. Weeks too late it it wasn't that, that good. Mm-hmm. So Kenny Pickett, did he impress you? Now, since this game, his stock is up 17.9%. It makes, makes sense because now he's the starter for the season. But are you how Kenny Pickett? What did you see from him in that game? Are there any positive signs from it? I would say Kenny Pickett had a... Very interesting first game because any other quarterback who comes in at half times and throws three interceptions were saying was a terrible outing. And everyone, including Pittsburgh fans, said they found their guy. They did it. And I understand. Kenny Pickett had some really nice plays, right? He had multiple plays where he was extending the extending uh, extending the play with his legs, moving out to the left, throwing across his body, made some couple nice throws. Um, especially had one Quinn and Williams right in his face, dot over the middle of the field that Mitch Trubisky Facts, simply that isn't going to be able to do. Um, but he did have two of those three interceptions was his fault. The last one was a Hail Mary that I'm not really overthinking. Mm-hmm. The Chase Claypool one, I understand the mindset. You have Claypool who's 6'4", six, 6'5", six, against Lamarcus Jordan who's around 5'9". He has opening. Maybe it is a bit overthrow- uh, underthrown, but it's also first and 10. They had just gotten a first down. I don't know if that's the time you take a shot in a low-scoring game that I'm still putting on Pickett. And then the other interception, which was a great play by Sauce, he was late getting the ball out to the outside. I believe he was targeting Fryermuth on that play. He was late to the outside. Sauce broke it up. I think Michael Carter came over and intercepted that. I'm not sure which DB it was. So I am giving two of the interceptions on him, but he showed flashes. He came in at halftime. He was losing. They were down. So for what the circumstance was, I got to give him, you know, at least a B if we're giving him a grade. George Pickens had his best game. He had over 100 yards. Deontay got involved a little bit more. Frymuth got involved a little bit more. And overall, the offense just looked like it had more life. And it was lifeless without Mitch Trubisky. Unfortunately, they came up short. But this is, again, going back to the Jets real quick, this is a game they would typically lose in previous years, right? On the road in Pittsburgh against Tomlin. They're not the best team right now, but in previous years, this is the game the Jets lose, and with Zach back, his mobility, his fourth quarter play, it was very encouraging to see him win. 
Kenny Pickett should have been playing a little while ago, if you ask me. In the preseason, he was easily their best quarterback. And Mitch Trubisky, up until this point, has just been excruciating to watch. He's just not been enjoyable. The offense is extremely stagnant week in, week out. And at halftime, they had to pull the plug because you're going against the Jets, who their secondary is probably the one part you look at and just think, yes, this is super solid. But outside of that, it shouldn't be that hard to move the ball. Najee Harris, he had a decent game, but he really wasn't anything special either. The offensive line is not great, so it's really hard to look at just Mitch Trubisky and think that he's the only issue. But you need some kind of spark. If you're if not, let me not say Mitch Trubisky was in a position to be a franchise quarterback. But if you're a starting level quarterback, you got to be able to do something for me on the football field. It seemed as if Mitch struggled to do so. He had one play that was called back, that not called back, but. It was ruled out of bounds that Deontay Johnson was just had his foot on the line. That was a beautiful throw. That was also a beautiful catch. I think that was on sauce also. It was. Um, but that ended up not being a touchdown. <clears throat> then it ended up resulting in no points. It's tough to sit here and think that why would we not see what we have in Kenny Pickett when, one, our team's already terrible, and two, let's see what Kenny Pickett has. God forbid he's not who we think he is. We're going to have a great draft draft pick if our team is as bad as it it continues to be as bad as it's been if Kenny Pickett's not that guy we use this high draft capital to get a CJ to get a Bryce to get a Caleb or okay KP is our guy he has shown us a little bit of something especially early in his career we can use this this draft capital to put a piece around him to better this roster put myself in a position in the future to thrive not the greatest of debuts I feel like B might be a little bit a little bit too generous. He did have two rushing touchdowns. Yes, he really did look good extending plays outside of the pocket. And and him having a, a connection with Pickens early on is essential, especially because of what we saw from Pickens in the preseason. He looked super exciting. Some flashes here and there during the regular season. Of course, he has the one-handed grab, uh, not this past week, but the week before that uh, against the Browns. I think that what I want to see from Pickett more is a consistency in the passing area. Yes, he had two rushing touchdowns, but let's start to see that with his arm. And, of course, referring to Mojo, the stock is going to go up. Inevitably, you you become a, a starting quarterback. We're already seeing he was 17, now he's $21. I would, I would short Kenny Pickett. If I'm investing, this isn't a guy that I'm looking at and thinking, this is my long-term answer. I'm thinking for the rest of this season, he's probably going to be a starting quarterback. He's not going to play all world, but he's going to play decent enough. He has the pieces around him to be successful. I want to short a guy like this. I want to try and and maximize my value, but in a limited sample. Real quick, uh, before you go, Rip, Caleb is just 2024. Ah, okay. Right now, there's really only like two, like Bryce and and CJ have stood out about the rest. Will Levis as well. Um, But the next four games for Pittsburgh... It's rough. They got Buffalo, Rocks, Miami, Rocks. Tampa Bay, and the Eagles. They got the so bu- you think Bucks Kenny Pickett's like stock is going to go down? Game. Yeah. I don't think it's going to go down. When you're shorting someone, you're only investing for a little while. Like this past weekend. On Mojo, if you're shorting, you're expecting to go down. Yeah. That's yeah. why I asked. Ah, I, actually, I understand. Yeah. So, uh, no, eventually, yes, it will go down. But you short them. You, get, you maximize your value. And then you pull your money. So, similarly, this weekend, I shorted Daniel Jones because I knew he was going against the Bears. This upcoming weekend, he plays the Packers in London. I don't love that matchup for Daniel Jones. So I decided to put some quick money in, knew that he was going to be successful against the Bears, got a cute little profit, pulled my money. There's no reason to continue to, to invest in him. If I know that he's going to play poorly and I'm going to lose some money on my investment, no, I'm going to be I'm going to be mindful of that. I'm going to short him, and I'm going to take my investment. We, and, just, we just had a big and, trade in our uh, main league. Main? Yeah. Screaming. Sorry, sorry to cut you all off. Um, Joey traded Khalil Amon-Ra and James Robinson for... G got Jamar Chase. Damn. That's pretty crazy. Which one? Who won? Uh, wow. Yeah, that's nuts. G got Jamar Chase and Damian Harris time? for Amon Rod, James Robinson. Wow, this trade's nuts. Yeah. When talking about Kenny Pickett, I feel like if we're talking about any other quarterback having three interceptions in, in one half, we're not saying that's a good debut. I don't no think way. Kenny Pickett had a good debut. I'm with you. The interception on... When he threw it to Claypool, it was 100% his fault. He underthrew the ball. Yeah, Badly. but jo- Joyner, I mean, excuse me, Claypool should make that play over Joyner. And we were I talking say, about it yesterday, and you were trying to say that Claypool has to make that play. He does. I'm just, it's in double coverage, too. He underthrown ball. It was fake and un- double coverage. When he went up, it was just Joyner on him. It was underthrown. It, it was yeah. very or underthrown. The but thing that- about Kenny Pickett is that when he came into the game, he gave them a spark. I, I think he did. The, the offense definitely moved better. 
And I feel like he just has better command of the offense over Trubisky. I'm with you. And he's not afraid to make throws. You saw a back, a back shoulder throw to George Pickens, a rusher in his face. He gets hit and hits Frermuth on, on a in, down the field in the middle field. Those were some good plays. But I feel like Kenny Pickett, I wasn't the highest on him coming out of college. I don't know if he's the answer for Pittsburgh. Is he somebody I'm investing in? I don't know if, if Kenny Pickett's the guy that I'd, I'd invest in. Maybe for the short term, just because Kenny Pickett, just because Kenny Pickett, to me, he'll be the starter. His stock will go up off a couple good games. But I think this is major news for a guy like George Pickens. So that begs the question, because George Pickens' first 100-yard game, most of that was, was due to Kenny Pickett targeting him. Now that the Steelers are starting Kenny Pickett, are you investing in Kenny Pickett and George Pickens, or are you just trusting in that George Pickens investment to go up? I'm definitely in on George Pickens. Uh, you saw the connection they had in the preseason. Had it with Mitch, too, but with Pickett some as well, and in training camp the whole time. I just think Pickett had a lot of experience with Pickens in training camp. You know, like he wasn't, Pickens wasn't always with the first team, and, and Pickett was obviously with the second team as well. So you saw the connection right away. And I liked Pickens more as a prospect at a wide receiver position than I did Pickett at the quarterback position. So I would definitely still be invested in George Pickens, but I'm on the same, you know, boat as you. Pickett, I think, was my QB1, or maybe it was Malik, but regardless, I wasn't in love with anyone in this quarterback class. I do like Pickens a lot. I like his upside. We know Pittsburgh can develop receivers, so I'm definitely not Pickens. George Pickens is at $9 right Steel. now. 10% increase uh, from this past week. I mean, he's he's young. He's what one of the flasher. Before? 10%. He'd be at like 8 10 before. He's young. He's one of the flashier wide receivers in this draft class. You got to you gotta at least be interested in investing. And in he Pickens. made a couple of nice plays on <coughs> DJ Reed, who's been spectacular this season. Basically, just don't even throw DJ Reed's way. Yeah. That's how great he's No, been. there's no question I'm investing into George Pickens. I think George Pickens is a legit receiver. I have doubts about Kenny Pickett as a quarterback, so I'm not trusting that investment. But George Pickens, I think, is the winner in this new quarterback um, new quarterback room yeah. of the Steelers. Or not quarterback room, but of Kenny Pickett finally starting, George Pickens is definitely the winner because Mitch Trubisky wasn't targeting him much. I think Kenny Pickett, that's going to be possibly his go-to option next to Deontay Johnson. It's going to be Pickett, Pickens and Deontay Johnson, so I'm definitely... Invest in his George Pickens. I think Fryermuth too is a good call. We know rookie quarterbacks love tight ends. Got big guy over the middle who has good hands. I think Claypool is the one guy out of this offense that I'm taking a step back from. Najee, we saw this year as well. Najee just the thing the difference between Najee this year and last year, last year Ben was targeting him a lot in the passing game. This year, not so much. The offensive line still hasn't been good. So you're relying on Najee to get those goal line carries and get those touchdowns, which he hasn't been able to do this year. His efficiency hasn't been there that year or this year. I still like Najee as a player, but the Steelers need a more explosive offense for him to get going. It's now like, I have a question for you guys. Okay. And sorry, then you could go. Okay, bro. No worries. Kenny Pickett, two rookie quarterbacks I want to talk about. Kenny Pickett and Desmond Ritter. Kenny Pickett is at $22. He just got the nod to start. Desmond Ritter is at $7. Which one would you rather invest in right now? Seven dollars is cheap for Ritter. Mariota hasn't been terrible. He hasn't been good. I don't think Mariota has been terrible, but I think we are going to see Ritter this season inevitably. And I do think Ritter in Atlanta's offense. I trust Arthur Smith as a play caller and getting Desmond Ritter in rhythm. Like yeah. I think Ritter's price can go up tremendously. You trust it, even though he's not getting Kyle Pitts incorporated into the offense. I do, Arthur. I mean. Even though Kyle Pitts is not incorporated to the offense, the Atlanta Falcons running game, despite an it's offensive been line it's been great. that we don't hold to high regard, has been absolutely amazing. Yeah. The coaching staff in Atlanta knows what they're doing. People want to pinpoint that Pitts situation. Arthur Smith is a fantastic offensive play caller. There's no doubt about it. He's Maybe. fantastic. So what's the prices? What's the Desmond Ritter's at seven dollars, Pickett's at twenty two. The only thing about Ritter is if Atlanta struggles this year, which we're expecting them to they could be in the conversation for quarterbacks. They used a, what, a third, fourth round pick on Ritter. So they're not heavily invested in him to the fact that if they have a chance to get Bryce or CJ, they'll probably jump on it. Or pick it on the other hand, I don't think the Steelers are going to be as bad. And also having first round draft capital, you probably have a bit of a longer leash. It's more of a risk for Ritter, but he's so cheap right now that I would throw you know a couple shares on it to see if, what happens. If you throw $50, $70 on that, and he ends up becoming a starter... You're looking at him going from seven dollars to, and they mo- have the weapons, mo- most likely plus. fifteen. Have, yeah. yeah, and you get Calvin Ridley possibly back next year. That could be one of the most explosive offenses in the league if Ritter can take that step it's with like pitch j- in London. Just from Bailey Zappi entering the game, he went from a couple cents to five dollars. That just goes to show you 
Get him in the game. We can see what happens. Yeah, and once Desmond Ritter starts, if he has a couple good starts, he goes from seven to 20 plus. And the only difference why we probably look at KP and he's a little bit more money is that one, he was drafted in the first round. And of course, he just made his first appearance in yeah. an NFL game. Ritter being a third, fourth round quarterback, he's not going to be valued in the teens similarly to. To Kenny Pickett. And if you want to invest in Pickett, I would wait a couple weeks until this four-game stretch is over where they're playing legitimately four of the best teams in the NFL. Then invest in him after his price has gone down a yep. little bit. Get some more value. This week against Buffalo could be ugly. Yeah, like, Extremely ugly. Like, it's unfortunate that they're doing him like this. 